Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown. On behalf of everyone who's helping us to lead worship today, we welcome you on this beautiful day that God has given us to worship and be together online today. I want to encourage everyone who's joining with us today, particularly if it's your first time to join with us in online worship, to use our contact form. The link to that is right in the opening post, uh, right here on Facebook and in YouTube, and maybe it'll be in the comment section as well, the link, but please use that contact form. This is a way that we can connect with you, get to know you a little bit better, that we'll be able to connect you with our online e-newsletter, which has all of the information about all of the ministries and opportunities to connect and grow in faith and serve with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There's also a place in that contact form to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we encourage you again to use that contact form today. When we get together for online worship, this is not just another video that we're watching, but it is our worship of God together. So we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. By participating, we say that we're going to fully participate in what it is that we're doing together today. So we encourage you to turn off other devices, other distractions, really focus in, maybe light a candle if that will help you to focus, and then fully participate. Pray when it's time to pray and join in the call to worship and sing the songs and do all the things and just be a part of our worship experience experience today. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that all of the ways that we're together, the way we use the comment section, the way we may be gathered with people right now as we worship, the way we send all of this out into our community, into our world, that all of it will be a blessing to everyone involved. Again, I welcome you to worship and I encourage you now to join with us in our call to worship. Hi, I'm Joy Brown, and I'm a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and also a lay member to annual conference. Hi, I'm Karis Brown. I'm part of the youth group in the Handbell Choir. Please join us in the call to worship. Your line is 
Thank you, God, for worship and rest. Let's practice saying that together now. Thank you, God, for worship and rest. Let's worship together, a time to recharge, to learn, and say thanks to God. Thank you, God, for worship and rest. So we come, bringing our burdens and cares. Thank you, God, for worship and rest. May God heal our spirits and strengthen us during this time. Thank you, God, for worship and rest. Please join us in singing How Firm a Foundation. My name is Tracy Sisk, and I am a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of Lydia Circle and the choir. Um, I would like now to start us off with our opening prayer. Lord of love and mercy, we come to you in worship and prayer on this beautiful summer day. This should be a time of relaxation and restoration, but our spirits carry so many burdens. We spend so much of our summer rushing around that we find ourselves exhausted. We forget the spiritual practice of rest that you have given us. Forgive us and heal us, Lord. Restore our energies so that we may follow Jesus in love and service in our community and world. We offer our cares and our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me and any other folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Good morning. This is the Young Adult Sunday School class. My name is Gay Seibert. This is my husband, Rich. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Molly Barrett. And I'm Rex. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Allie. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Trisha Kumach. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Erin Emery. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Justine Dion. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Rita Brinkley. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Michelle Engel. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Joe Johnson, and this is my wife, Rebecca. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Cindy Hammer, and peace be with all of you. Yes, it is time for Small Talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are gathering with us in online worship to come in close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with Small Talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for Small Talk. Oh, 
God. Really? Oh, 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 I overslept. Well, hi everyone. It is Miss Lori and Laud. Oh. oh, I'm exhausted, Laud. Yeah, you were too? Well, it doesn't really seem like it at all. Oh, and I need to, <laughs> I need to wake up, right? Mm-hmm. We did so much work last night and it was so hard and I'm just exhausted. Do you know anything that's gonna help here, Laud? I see you got my wake up mug. You know what'll help? Jesus, Jesus will help. Yes, yes he will. He tells us that he will help us carry our load and give us rest, right? Yeah. I'm so glad Laud has awakened me with that message this morning. Yeah, I think I feel better knowing that Jesus is gonna carry my load and help me. So, now, Laud, we have a cup of sunshine. Jesus, is my cup of sunshine. Have a great day, everybody, and get some rest. <laughs> All right. Hello, my name is Diane Steinbaker. I am part of the prayer group, Miriam Circle, and Zephyr Sunday School class. Today's reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I hope that you are enjoying our summer worship series, Stories to Live By, here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a joy this season to dive into these beloved and faith-shaping stories and verses from our Bible, brought to us by so many different people who are part of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. I have learned so much from each person who has shared. What a blessing it has been. We are continuing in this series all the way through the rest of the summer through to Labor Day weekend, and we have several more special special guests who will be joining us for these final weeks. So I hope that you will continue to share in worship online or in worship in the sanctuary with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Worship in the sanctuary is on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. You're not going to want to miss a single one of these worship experiences. The verses to live by that I'm sharing with you today and that Diane read for us so beautifully come at the end of a prayer of Jesus found in Matthew chapter 11. I'll bet many of the musicians among us recognize this text from Handel's Messiah with the alto soprano duet of He Shall Feed His Flock and Come Unto Him, which is then followed by the full chorus of His Yoke Is Easy. These move movements finish part one of Messiah, and I love to get to sing those. And for the first 30 plus years of my life, that was certainly why I was familiar with these verses to live by from Matthew chapter 11, because of Handel's Messiah. However, these verses became deeply ingrained in me a little bit later in my faith journey at a time when I was really struggling with growing and deepening my relationship with God and loving Jesus and following the Holy Spirit. I was really desperate for this, really thirsty for these relationships. And frankly, at that point in my life, if I was going to survive, much less thrive, with young children and an incredibly active church and my marriage and life and everything, I needed a new way forward. But oh my goodness, so many of the classic spiritual practices just did not seem to be for me. Now, spiritual practices are those activities that help us grow in 
faith and in love uh, of Jesus and to even more deeply and shape us in his likeness. Those things like worship and study and prayer and service and generosity and regular Holy Communion and fasting and Holy Conversation and on and on. But many of the spiritual practices that were introduced to me at that time were awesome for the introverts, but not so much for my extroverted self. I just couldn't engage in hours of silent prayer and devotional study of the Bible and contemplation. And so many of my friends and colleagues just seemed to thrive with those practices. But for me, they were just mind numbing and sleep inducing. Well, let's be honest, I was tired all of the time. Maybe you can identify with that place in life. In the midst of this struggle, several of my colleagues recommended that I go on a silent retreat. Excuse me, did you say a silent retreat? Yes, a silent retreat. That's where you spend time not talking, but instead listening. And not to other people talking at you, but rather for God and for the Holy Spirit. And as it is a retreat, a retreat, you generally go do this somewhere away from your more ordinary life and for several days, if at all possible. Needless to say, a silent retreat was not something I'd ever considered for myself, but I really needed to press the restart button and try something, anything. So truth, I have trouble not talking and even more so at this particular time in my life. So my family was like, ha, this is gonna be good. Meredith's not gonna talk. And my congregation at the time was like, double ha. We can't wait to see how this one turns out. Good natured ribbing aside, my family and my congregation were all very supportive of my having this intentional time away and whatever it was that the experience was going to bring. So I headed off on my very first personal silent retreat to Glastonbury Abbey in Hingham, Massachusetts. And this is a beautiful spot in the world, by the way. It's out on the Cape with the Benedictine monks who live and share their vocation of hospitality and worship. It's beautiful. And it was a restorative experience for sure. Good rest and healthy food, following the daily offices of community worship, which happened six times a day. And then there was the silence listening and watching for God's voice and nudges and the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit's leadings. One afternoon, I discovered the labyrinth on the grounds of Glastonbury Abbey. Now, walking a labyrinth is an ancient contemplative spiritual practice. You walk, it's usually a large circular kind of looking thing and it has a single path that winds inward to a center point and then you walk the path back outward and it symbolizes a spiritual practice. Perhaps you've seen a labyrinth before or a labyrinth pattern or have walked one. I brought a picture of the most famous labyrinth pattern in the world. It's the one found in the floor at Chartres Cathedral in France. And this labyrinth pa pattern is available to us at Jubilee Farm in New Berlin, Illinois. It's just down the road. It uses this same pattern marked into the ground. Now, my experience walking the labyrinth during this retreat came to me in the same way that many uh, formative spiritual experiences come to me. I literally stumbled into it. I had launched out onto the grounds of the abbey with my Bible in hand, and I was intending to find some kind of lovely spot to sit down and maybe read some psalms or something, you know, stuff you ought to be doing while you're on a silent spiritual retreat. And I was walking, I was looking for just the right spot for my silent contemplations. And I noticed a kind of clearing in the trees and the brushes around it. And I was like, what it, well, what is that? And so I wandered over to it and I pushed through some shrubbery to take a closer look. And then I was like, oh, I can see these large, these winding paths that are covering like this half acre or more. And then I was like, oh, this is a labyrinth. My introverted contemplative friends were all about these labyrinth things, but I had mostly been like, yeah, whatever. Uh, there, but there I was, I had literally stumbled into one with nothing but silence and my Bible and time on my hands. So I kind of climbed back out of the shrubbery and wandered around the outside a bit and I found the entrance, which was clearly marked by the way with a sign that said labyrinth, with instructions about what a labyrinth is, but I'd missed all that the first time around. So I was standing at the entrance and it looked like there was a path that went straight to the center. So I started following the path. It did not 
go straight to the center at all, but instead wove in and out and around the outside and in and then out again and back to the inside. And so I'd see the center and I'd walk a bit and then I'd keep following the path and I'd walk back out away from it, all in this path of the labyrinth. Now what made this more exciting and truthfully a little bit dangerous was that the path of this labyrinth was incorporated into the natural obstacles of the landscape. There were sharp stones alongside and in the path and tree stumps of varying sizes and uneven ground and tree roots and pokey brush and bushes. I had to pay really close attention to where I was placing my feet, how I was walking, what would be the next step. I had to s slow down. I couldn't look too far ahead on the path or I would easily lose track of my footing, would stumble and trip or cut an ankle on a rock or maybe even fall down and really hurt myself. I really couldn't look but just a step or two down the path. I had to trust that the path I was following would take me where it was I needed to go. So I was fully engaged in this walking. And uh, all of my senses were engaged and in making my way through it, I took the time and I was the very careful movements I needed to do to follow the circuitous and winding path to the center of the labyrinth. I finally got there and I sat down on the ground in the center, in the silence. And I thought, wow, that was pretty cool. And after a few more minutes, I was like, well, so what? That was interesting. I enjoyed it, but what does this labyrinth walking have to do with anything? With my everyday life of the minutia of caring for children, the craziness of church ministry, my relationships. There's never enough sleep. There's never enough prayer time or study time or exercise time or enough of me really to go around ever. The anger and frustration was just welling up inside of me. Sure, this is an interesting walk, this cool maze. Take it one step at a time. You can't see but a few steps down the path to follow God's path closely. Blah, 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 whatever. So the heck what? So I sat there fuming for a bit. And then there was the silence. And the silence. And then no words. And finally, less fuming. And then these words of Jesus were placed on my heart. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I shuffled around in my Bible and I found the verses of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I sat there with those verses and repeated them over and over in my mind several times. And then I stood up and I began my reverse journey out of the labyrinth, just as carefully walking the pathway out, but this time repeating those verses over and over again as I walked, imprinting on my heart and my soul as I again picked my way carefully step by step around rock and over root and stump and one step at a time. Come to me and find rest for your soul. As I walked and I further contemplated, I found myself realizing that God loved me and Jesus loved me and the Holy Spirit was guiding me, yes, even me. That the spiritual practices that deepen relationship with God, that help us fall more deeply in love with Jesus, that help us to be connected with Spirit, that those are for me too, not just for uh, folks who are wired to sit and pray and study for hours on end, not just for the introverts, but for me, Meredith, the way I am wired, I will find rest for my soul. I continued my careful walking out of the labyrinth, repeating the verses, take my yoke, take my yoke upon you. Not someone else's, but mine, Jesus says. Learn from me. Learn from Jesus, yet let Jesus, yes, Jesus be my guide. 
not just take spiritual cues from friends or colleagues or how it's supposed to work in growing close to Jesus. And I continue to walk remembering, well, what did Jesus do then? And I remembered, well, he talked with people and he prayed with people. He practiced spiritual growth with people and he had contemplative prayer time alone too. He shared meals, spent time with children, shared in scripture with others, sought God's word and direction, served people and helped people. Jesus had all kinds of spiritual practices, quiet introverted ways and yes, outward focused extroverted ways too. And I kept walking and listening to Jesus' words, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, our spiritual lives are about discipline, regular practice, which is how the spiritual practice get into the deep places of our spirit and shape us to be like Jesus. They're not a one and done most of the time. But spiritual practices are also intended to fit us, to fit me, to fit you, the wonderful, unique, quirky, plain old person God has created us to be. I kept walking and listening to Jesus' words, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus' yoke fits and so it works extremely well. Just like a well-fitting yoke that brings together working animals so they can move extremely heavy loads, Jesus' yoke, when we take his yoke on us, it works well. It connects us to Jesus who carefully and tenderly guides us along life's path. And yoked to Jesus, we can do amazing things and difficult things and everyday things. Jesus' yoke is easy and carrying the burden with him is light. And on I walked and prayed and listened. It's been, oh, at least 15 years since that experience of walking my first labyrinth and having these verses to live by written on my heart. I have since found the spiritual practice of walking a labyrinth at various times over the years to be helpful and instructive and connecting to spirit. Labyrinths, who knew? Well, lots of people knew, but it just took me a long time to get on board. I also now have a regular practice of silence and contemplation. I have found over time that the spiritual practices that sustain and push me to grow in my faith have changed over that time too, ebbing and flowing as Spirit revealed what it is that is needed and, and I say yes to doing them. And all of those ways from Bible study alone and with others and prayer practices alone and with others, worship and communion, service and justice, fasting and taking to the streets, music making, playing and Sabbath making and silence and gratitude, all of them. It was such a relief on that day so long ago to understand that one size does not fit all and that, thank God, there are so many spiritual practices available to us. What I've also come to understand that there is a very important thing about spiritual practices that has stayed the same. And that primarily is the need to actually do them. It may sound silly, but it's just true. Like exercise or working your steps in recovery, you have to actually do it. And in that process of actually doing spiritual practices to allow myself to be yoked to Jesus so that the yoke is easy, that makes the burden light. And finally, there's this truth. Being connected to Jesus in these spiritual practices, being yoked to him, makes it possible for us to do life in all of its amazing complexity. Jesus' yoke makes it possible for us to do the hard things alongside Jesus, to lift heavy burdens, to have the difficult and necessary conversations that move our lives, others' lives, and our communities forward towards God's kingdom, to wholeheartedly participate in justice, reconciliation, and peace, to be brave and tender and truthful and vulnerable, particularly with those realities that tend to make us the most prickly or defensive or closed off such as learning to be anti-racist as individuals and in our systems, 
working for climate justice and economic justice, realizing full inclusion and celebration of LGBTQIA people and full inclusion and celebration of all people in all of our complexities, having these conversations, doing this very real work, these are the realities that come from loving and following Jesus. And they are only possible because we are connected with Jesus and yoked with Jesus, with Jesus. I pray that if you are struggling with spiritual practices, having time to do them, figuring out what to do or any of these things, that you won't struggle alone. That you know that your church family is here. I am here to help you and support you in the spiritual practices that will both sustain and push you to grow. That will sustain us as a community and push us to grow. I hope that as we head into the fall season that you will take advantage of the so many opportunities there are to study and pray and worship and serve, to be generous, to engage in difficult and necessary conversation. So many spiritual practices that are available to you through our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. And that you will hear and remember that Jesus is calling you to come to him and to learn from him that his yoke is easy, and that his burden is light. Amen. Please join us in singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. everybody. My name is Cami Mancy, and I would ask that you please bow your heads and open your hearts and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you such thanks for this day and for this opportunity to worship, be it online, be it together. Your spirit is everywhere, omniscient and omnipresent, and we trust in that, Lord. We bring so much to you today, but first we want to adore you and tell you how wonderful you are to us that you gather us here, that you bring us close to you, that you protect us and watch over us, that your spirit guides us, and that we have an opportunity to still 
ourselves for a moment to come to you with prayer, a conversation, and concerns. We start with our gratitude, Lord, and we lift up our joys. We give you thanks for summers, for festive opportunities, for gatherings, and for fun. Uh, we give you thanks for ease and vacation and time off and rest for individuals. We thank you, Lord, for the service that we are able to do, for the fellowships, for the small groups, for uh, an opportunity of those that are overcoming challenges in their life, Lord. And we give you thanks for the perseverance that you have armed us with and the ability to get past and see how you have interluded and precluded everything. Lord, for our health concerns today, we give to you the COVID and all of the social unrest that comes along with that, the vaccinations and, and the masks, that there is respect for one another and adoration for one another. We give thanks for the doctors and the nurses and the caregivers that are on the front line of all of it. For our cancer patients, be them young and old, for up and coming procedures and, and chemotherapy, for recoveries and for healings, for surgeries and operations that are yet to come. We ask that you watch over those that are in a state of pain and uh, sadness because they are not physically equipped in the ways that they once were. Those that are ailing parents and children. We ask that you be with those that are in the stage of giving birth and for pregnancies, for those that are in treatment plans, Lord, and for those that have just been and received a diagnosis. For our concerns, be them social, economic, or cultural, we give to you our homeless, the broken, the least, and the lost. We give to you those who are recovering from afflictions and addictions, for depression and anxiety that seems to mourn and grieve our society more and more these days. For a sound mind, Lord, and a sound heart, we pray for an opportunity to clear the static and hear only you. For uh, the hustle and for the grind of activities, getting things done that need to be done. For daily stresses and anxieties that seem to overwhelm us, Lord, one by one and bit by bit. We lift to you those with grieving hearts that are going through losses, that are facing losses that are maybe a year past losing someone very special to them and figuring out what this new life without these special people might feel like. Be with these individuals and give them the proper stages of grief and the opportunity to carry on with the memories and the love of their past ones. We lift you all of the, uh, uh, the events of fall that are about to happen, be them sports, be them schools. Prepare our teachers and the administrators. Prepare our children for education and for learning and the gift that that truly is. For our college students that are getting ready to head away for brand new scenes and brand new experiences, Lord, protect them and keep them knitted within your fabric. Let them hear your voice. And let it be you that guides them through this new moments in their lives and with their families and with their parents that will be behind, supporting them from afar. We lift you all of our military men and our women, our first responders and our police, our state authorities, Lord. We pray for our leaders and authorities and all of their constituents that they make good decisions. They make decisions based on your word, based on your spirit based on your example, Lord, and what is best and what is just for our whole and our society. Lord, you know that there are so many out there that have asks and requests of you. Let them be heard and please follow them through. It is in all of these things that we wrap up with the loving prayer that you taught your disciples so many years ago. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and your power and your glory forever and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. 
generosity is such an important spiritual practice that does yoke us with Jesus, that brings forth that love and openness and generosity of who we are with our financial gifts, with our gifts of talents and service in the world. So much of that is so important to help us become the people Jesus is calling us to be. And so I thank you for the ways that you are so generous with your financial giving, with the giving of yourself into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I want to encourage you to continue that. You can continue in your financial giving using our online giving, which is available on our website. The link is available in the comment section and, um, and you can connect right there in those ways. It's on our website. Um, also, you can have your financial institution or ours set up some automatic giving. If you need help with that, contact us in the church office. And of course, you can send in checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And all of that giving makes so many ministries possible for us at Douglas Avenue. So thank you for that giving. And I want to remind you to use the contact form today, um, that that's a way that we can get the e-news to you so that you know all of those ways to be connected and to be of service and to grow in your faith. And to remember that there's a place there for your prayer concerns that go straight to our pastor into our prayer team. We love to pray with you. And that too is such an important part of our growing in faith and in our generosity. Thank you so much for all of the ways that you give. Please join us in singing, You Never Let Go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been such a joy to be with you during this time, and I pray that your experience has been uplifting and meaningful, that you will continue to join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in online worship, or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Again, please use that contact form so that we can be in touch with you and can connect you with all of the ministries of Douglas Avenue, can be a part of your life and faith and growing in your love of Jesus. We love to do that together. And remember to use that uh, prayer concerns, the place for that on that contact form. Those prayers go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love you and long to be connected with you, to be able to grow together and to share this life of faith. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of that with us. And as you go into your day, Go knowing that God loves who you are and the way that you are so magnificently shaped and created in God's image. That Jesus Christ is right there with you, offering a way for you to come to Him and to be connected with Him. And that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in this path of life and service and love and generosity. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.